afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, we have the pleasure to have our Acting Assistant Secretary Susan Thornton from our Bureau of East Asia and Pacific Affairs, who's going to brief today about um, the meetings that she's been in, um, including what uh, Secretary T T Tillerson had to say um, on the DPRK this morning. She'll open it up with a, a few brief remarks, and then we'll take questions. Um, when I, uh, I'll call on you for questions if you can give your name and affiliation and keep your question brief because we don't have a lot of time here today and with that I'll turn it over to Assistant Secretary Thornton. Thank you very much and thank you all for being here this afternoon. Sorry to be a little bit late coming over from the uh, UN building but I'm really happy that you are all able to come and listen to this afternoon to a brief readout of what we've been doing today over at the, um, the UN building. Of course, uh, today we had Secretary Tillerson in town for a ministerial level uh, UN Security Council meeting. This month is the US uh, presidency of the Security Council, and we convened the first ever ministerial level Security Council meeting on the issue of the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Um, we had a very good discussion this morning in the council. I'm sure some of you have already seen uh, some of the remarks that were mentioned, but I would characterize that conversation as really reflecting um, a broad consensus among the entire council uh, about the seriousness of the threat posed by the nuclear and missile programs in North Korea, the frustration on the part of the Council over the repeated violations of UN Security Council resolutions about this issue, um, and a resolve to sort of address the issue, step up the pressure, and really try to make a concerted and united effort to uh, get the North Korean regime to change its mind about its weapons programs and come to the table and be prepared to talk about denuclearization. So I think uh, the Secretary had a number of meetings in addition to the Council meeting. He met in trilateral format with the uh, Japanese Foreign Minister Kishida and the uh, Korean Foreign Minister Yoon this morning uh, before the Council session to discuss further our trilateral cooperation with respect to the North Korean issue. Uh, and then um, after the session this afternoon, he had a bilateral meeting with Foreign Minister uh, Wang Yi of China uh, to discuss uh, how to go about uh, the approach on keeping up the pressure on North Korea and uh, pursuing a uh, strategy of cooperation going forward to bring about some kind of resolution to this issue. The Secretary had a number of other uh, bilateral meetings and he's been doing outreach to foreign ministers around the globe in the run-up to this meeting today to try to solicit and coordinate our international effort to step up the pressure on this issue which is frankly becoming very quickly, the number one national security uh, priority for the uh, Trump administration. So uh, with that, I'll just offer those brief opening remarks and then um, be happy to take a couple of questions. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm sorry about that, but I'm happy to, uh, to do what I can here this afternoon. So, so I'm going to. Thank you. Uh, my name is Masato Shinagata with Kyoto News of Japan. Uh, could you tell us what uh, what exactly the Chinese are saying uh, in case of something extraordinary happens in North Korea, and you know what kind of me specific measures are are they willing to take? And also, uh, do you think the uh, possibility of uh, major major conflict is over for now, or is it approaching? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I think on the issue of what the Chinese would be willing to do should there be another major provocation, and I take it that was what you meant by the first part of your question. Um, the Chinese have been pretty clear, and I think Secretary Tillerson even spoke about it a bit yesterday in some of the media coverage that he had, um, that they've been signaling clearly to the North Koreans that they will be willing to take additional significant measures in the event of a further provocation. Um, and by that, I think we mean probably another uh, nuclear test. They've already done five of those. Uh, and there's some talk that there might be a sixth nuclear test. That would be a major provocation. Also, uh, the potential for an ICBM 
internet intercontinental ballistic missile launch uh, would be another uh, category of major provocation. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the Chinese have been um, reaching out, talking to the North Koreans, explaining to them that there would be very serious consequences, uh, both from the UN uh, angle with regard to additional UN Security Council resolutions that would come in the wake of such an event, but also unilateral measures that China would take. They have not been specific about what they would be willing to do, but they have indicated uh, to us that they would be serious uh, measures. And uh, so far, I think we feel that, you know, whatever, whatever we've been able to do, uh, whatever China has been able to do with North Korea, at least for, for this recent period of anniversaries in North Korea, they have not conducted a major provocation. Um, so we're not drawing any major conclusions from that, but that's at least not bad news. Uh, on the second part, um, major confrontation, I know the President had some comments on this. I mean, certainly the consensus at the Council today was that everybody understands that it's preferable to resolve this challenge peacefully. And that is what uh, the Secretary and his colleagues today at the Council uh, were talking about, our resolve to do. Uh, we, you know, don't want to take any options off the table because this has become an urgent threat. and. Time is running out. We've spent a lot of time over the past several decades working on this problem, and we, we can't keep working on it for several more decades. We don't have that kind of time. So I think um, we're working on how to solve this peacefully. That's why we're talking about this pressure campaign that will change the calculus of the regime in North Korea and convince them to come to the table, make a serious effort at discussing with the rest of the international community the denuclearization program. So I think that's, that's what we're after. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Thank you. Manic matter syndicated. Uh, there seems to be a lot of confusion on the deployment of THAAD in South Korea. The president made some remarks in an interview with Reuters demanding or, or asking for $1 billion from Seoul. And Seoul responded immediately saying, this is not going to happen. So could you give us an update on that, please? Sure. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if I would call it confusion, but it is true that the President is very serious about burden sharing with allies th with whom we have uh, military partnerships. And so I think when he thinks about all kinds of deployments around the world, and you've heard him also on the subject of NATO members, you know, not paying up to the required percentage of their GDP that they're required to pay into NATO for their or for their defense budgets. I think uh, this is another case where, you know, the president just wants to be sure that we're doing the kind of burden sharing in our alliances in Asia and in our alliance with South Korea that, you know, he thinks is, is fair and equitable. Of course, uh, we all know that uh, the South Koreans are a really, uh, uh, a bedrock ally. They do step up and do an awful lot. They pay 2.7 percent of their GDP into their defense budget, so they're uh, quite a bit above a number of our other partners. And uh, I think we're um, the president does realize that they have also contributed to burden sharing on on the THAAD deployment. So. Um, I think he's just looking to make sure that the U.S. is getting kind of equitable treatment and burden sharing out of the alliance. But I think on the THAAD deployment, um, you know, he, he recognizes that we've already done discussions on burden sharing, that the ROK has contributed to that deployment, and that um, they are a very solid ally when it comes to burden sharing and in sort of stepping up and being right with us there in the alliance. My name is Tanaka from NHK. Uh, can I, uh, I'm asking about uh, today's uh, meeting between Wan Yi, Wan Yi, China. Uh, can you uh, elaborate more? What uh, did did Secretary uh, ask specific measures for China to take uh, regarding DPRK? Well. Um you know, this conversation followed on a number of other conversations that we've had with the Chinese, both in bilateral format and multilateral format. We had the multilateral council session. There was a uh, multilateral lunch session at which 
north korea was also discussed in the same among the same group that was in the council session and then he had the bilateral meeting with the foreign minister with foreign minister wong after that so it was a long conversation in three parts i would say and in and among those three parts there was quite a lot of discussion of both general approaches and also sort of a more detailed or sort of granular sequencing and road map of of things we would expect to see you know over the coming months on the issue of north korea on the issue of international cooperation and also on the issue of um, China's contribution to that cooperation. Uh, I don't think I want to get into the details of the private conversation, but there are very specific things that we've been discussing, both that China could do, um, you know, with North Korea to try to test their, uh, you know, whether or not they've come to some kind of change of heart over the seriousness with which they would approach a discussion about denuclearization, but also on issues that they would um, pursue if in the case of another provocation or in, a, in the effort to step up pressure. So those discussions are ongoing. Uh, Guillermo Fesser from uh, El Intermedios uh, TV uh, news show in Spain. So uh, Secretary of State has pointed to nations that, uh, he said, have not fully enforced the UN resolutions against Korea and said that the U.S. won't hesitate to uh, sanction those third countries. I uh, would like to know which countries does the Secretary of State have in mind, and uh, would those countries be considered enemies in case that the military action is considered? I mean, are we talking of one enemy in North Korea, or are we talking of a mingled situation in the world? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so. I don't think he was having in mind a very specific list of countries when he says everybody has obligations to fully enforce the UN Security Council resolutions. Uh, we all know that in its efforts to circumvent sanctions and other kinds of restrictions put on its economy, the North Korean networks are quite uh, well established in uh, very underground ways that are hard to detect, are hard for countries to stop sometimes. And there was discussion at the Council this morning about the need to help countries build up their capacity to detect these kinds of underground networks that are that are maybe fueling and financing the weapons programs in North Korea. So I don't think he had any particular countries in mind on that list, but we do know that the North Koreans are getting around the sanctions because some countries are not able to or willing to uh, put the resources in to catch all of those transgressions. So I think that's what he meant. And that if we can't get satisfaction, if we bring information about some of these networks to a country, if we can't get it resolved uh, you know, by sh burden sharing and sharing cooperation and information, that we would have to take other steps to stop those financial flows from getting to the North Koreans so that they can use them to further their weapons programs. And that's what he meant by the imposing our own national measures on those companies. Thank you. Um, I'm Eugene Yu from Kyoto News. And I want to ask about the, from China's voice. Uh, Chinese Foreign Minister proposes the start of a six-party talk today. And, but uh, I see the uh, Secretary Tirasen uh, didn't mention the restart of a six-party talk. And you, U.S. stance is very different from the Chinese stance. So how do you fulfill the differences uh, among them? Yeah, it's, it's going to be hard for me to speak for the Chinese and their position. Uh, but what I think you're getting at is that there was a lot of talk on the part of the Chinese delegation about dialogue and uh, the need to try to get the North Koreans back to the negotiating table. What Secretary Tillerson has said is, um, we want to solve this diplomatically, we want to solve this peacefully, but we have not detected any seriousness on the part of the North Korean regime about coming to the table to discuss a negotiated solution and uh, denuclearization or 
um, abandonment of their weapons programs. And so I think we're looking for some signal of seriousness that would lead us to think it would be worth having these kinds of talks. Whereas on the Chinese side, I think they are more looking further down the road at the peaceful resolution and how we will get to talks. And so there's a little bit of a difference in emphasis there. I don't think the Chinese are particularly wedded to one format for the talks or another. They're just looking down the road to how we'll get to talks. And we are looking at the near term about how we can tell whether or not the North Koreans are serious about the talks. Because for us, that's the main uh, point. We have time, I think, for just one last question. Uh, this guy's had his hand up for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it after, because I have to let the foreign media first. Okay. Media. Okay. I'll get you later. <laughs> um, you last place. one. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. right. Thank you, Alexander McInerney from the Tokyo Shimbun. Um, just to follow up on what you're saying right now, um, what practically would you consider um, a signal of that seriousness? So what would you like to see from North Korea to show that they are ready to come back to negotiations and taking it seriously? Yeah, that's a very good question. And I think we'll know it when we see it. Um, if there's a big provocation, then we'll also know that that's not the answer we were looking for, OK? <laughs> All right, thank you all very much. It's great to be here with you. Appreciate the opportunity to talk with everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming today. Just um, to reiterate, this uh, briefing was on the record, and we will send out a transcript as soon as it is available. And the uh, video and audio will also be up as well. Thank you. Thank you.